Hello everyone, I am back. This is Thursday's video and I thought I would finish the week's videos off with a titled The Devil. So basically the scriptures that I'm going to read today, they all involve the wording the devil in the Bible and we'll see what the Bible has to say about it and I will make comments about each scripture. Um, I think this is kind of an interesting subject and a lot of people like to know about Satan or the devil as he's called and um, so I thought I might as well finish the week off with one. If you are liking my videos remember to like them and if you have not subscribed then that would be great also. Um, likes help to bring a video out of the abyss of YouTube and kind of get it noticed more and out there more so that other people can hear the gospel. So I will get right into it. A lot of people, what's interesting is to me is that a lot of people will believe in the devil or Satan or demons, but then they don't believe in God, which is actually comical to me because they're a spirit. And so you will believe in demons, okay, and have no problems believing in demons, but then have a problem believing in God. Uh, that's really an oxymoron, actually. And so I'm going to get right into it. And the first one is Matthew 12, 28. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, if I am casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. And so Jesus, when he came, he began casting out demons who were very present and inside of people and causing a total havoc in their life, misery. There was a, you know, a woman who had many de demons in her and he cast them out and she ended up following Jesus and being a great follower of Jesus. So the kingdom of God has come because Jesus Christ began casting out the demons. He has full power over the devil and demons. And then in Luke 10, 17 through 20, these are the disciples and uh, they were talking to um, Jesus. It says, when the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obeyed us when we used your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan falling from heaven as a flash of lightning. And I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you, but don't rejoice just because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered as citizens of heaven. And so he's keeping their focus on, first of all, the power does not come from them. It comes because they're using the name of Jesus Christ. And also he's telling them not to focus just on that because really a haughtiness can come through that. Um, and basically to rejoice that their names are registered as citizens of heaven. So think about that. If you are saved, you are on a register in the kingdom of heaven. We always see those little comics where St. Peter is standing there with a book open and there each person is giving their name to see if they're registered in the, you know, in that book. But actually that's true that he knows each person by name and we're registered as citizens of heaven. So, um, they had power in Jesus' name to cast out demons also, okay? And what's interesting, I had just saw an article about um, a woman who was demon-possessed, and there was a whole bunch of priests from the Vatican that actually was trying to cast this demon out for quite some time uh, in this woman. I think they were successful in it from what I remember, but you know, of course that would be awful. I would have, would not want anything to do with that. Um, and then in John 12, 31, it says the time of judgment for the world has come when the prince of the world will be cast out. Okay. And so that is when Satan is done is when Jesus Christ comes back and judge, judges the world and Satan is cast into um, the lake of fire and that in his judgment, okay? And 
praise God for that time when that comes. And then in Acts 10, 37, 38, it says, You know what happened all through Judea, beginning in Galilee after John the Baptist began preaching. And no doubt, you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And God still does that today. I absolutely believe people are still possessed by demons today. And um, I think people who are possessed by Satan himself tend to be probably more people who are very much in power, like I believe Adolf Hitler was, and you know people who were absolute nutcase dictators who caused mass death. I believe that he, he was possessing them just like he will possess the Antichrist, okay? And then it says in Acts 26, 17 through 8, 18, it says, I'm going to send you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. They will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. So basically, people don't know this, but if you are not saved, you are on the kingdom of darkness side already and don't even know it. You're actually working for Satan's kingdom. If you are saved, you are in the kingdom of light and you are working for God. And they are two opposing teams. And I suggest getting on God's team because he is the victor and he will win. And then in Romans 16, 20, it says the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. So there's that promise right there. And then in 2 Corinthians 11, 14 through 15, it says, Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder his servants can also do it by pretending to be godly ministers. In the end, they will get every bit of punishment their wicked deeds deserve. So they can act like angels of light that's why you have to know the bible to know when you're dealing with a spirit of deception that's the only way to know it anything that gets off jesus christ is definitely a spirit of deception and then it says ephesians 4 26 through 27 and don't sin by letting anger gain control over you don't let the sun go down while you're still angry for anger gives a mighty foothold to the devil. And isn't that so true? We can see article upon article where someone in a rage commits a crime because the devil got a foothold through that and they end up in prison for the rest of their life. They end up dead. You know, they end up murdering someone. So don't let the devil get a foothold by anger. And then it says, um, Hebrews 2.14, Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, Jesus also became flesh and blood by being born in human form. For only as a human could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. So Jesus Christ had to come in human form to break the power of the devil who had the power of death. He doesn't have the power of death over Christians because we are being raised to eternal life. So praise God about that. And then it says in James 4, 7 through 8, Humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near close to God and God will draw close to you. So we have to resist the devil by scripture, by obeying the Lord, by fleeing anything that we know can get us off track and drawing close to God. Okay. And then it says in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, be careful and watch out for attacks from the devil, your great enemy. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for some victim to devour. Take a firm stand against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that Christians all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. Here we see again, 
Satan is roaming around, seeing how he can get a foothold into your life, ready. He's roaring like a roaring lion, okay, and seeking whom he may devour. Don't let him devour you by t taking a firm stand, being ready with a sword of the full armor of God and uh, the scripture and fleeing any kind of temptation that you see. God has prepared a way out for you, okay? And then in 1 John 3, 8 through 10, it says, When people keep on sinning, it shows they belong to the devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy these works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not sin. And when it's saying that, it's saying they never, they're not saying they never sin, but they don't just keep going, living the exact same life that they were before. Because God's life is in them, okay? So how uh let me see uh so they can't keep on sinning because they've been born of god so now we can tell who are the children of god and who are the children of the devil anyone who does not obey god's commands and does not love other christians does not belong to god so if you see someone that says well i'm a christian but they live their whole life exactly the same there is no change they do the exact same thing they are a child of the devil Okay, and then in 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 2, it says, The Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from what we believe. They will follow lying spirits, demons, and teachings that come from demons. These teachers are hypocrites and liars. They pretend to be religious, but their consciences are dead. So these are fake people that were never Christians, they, um, you know, were going, they were acting like they're in the midst of us, but they end up going after lying spirits and their consciences are dead. That's how we know they're not believers because God transforms us and we are born again. And so you can't lose your salvation. So these were people who were never really Christians and go off and go into lying with lying spirits. Okay. And the very last one I want to end with, which is great. It's a great scripture. Revelation 20.10. Then the devil who betrayed them was thrown into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And that is a positive note to end on. Because they will get their comeuppance. In fact, the Bible talks about the devil knows his time is short here. And that's why he's trying to take everyone with him as much as he can. So remember to resist the devil. To know your scriptures so you know what is lying demonic teachings. To put on the full armor of God every day. To see the way out that God's provided when a temptation has come. And to be alert and be praying and, you know, sober in our days and times because we have a lot of attacks going on. I hope that everyone has a wonderful weekend and I will see you on Monday.